on deck. Somehow a Zuni rocket has been triggered, roaring across the flight deck and hitting an A-4 Skyhawk. Flame from the A-4's ruptured fuel tank has enveloped the Skyhawk and her immediate neighbors. Behind that curtain of smoke, two 1,000-pound bombs have already dropped from her wings onto the burning deck. Here, almost at mid-screen, we see a crash crew chief moving toward the flames with a Purple K fire extinguisher. His only thought, the trapped pilots in those planes. Away, two main fire parties are now on deck working close to the plane. But so far, only one hose is actually operating. Those who have survived it turn around and head back. There are buddies back there. The chief with the purple K is dead. for survival. Your instincts have to be right. Your courage penned on like a badge. Following the third explosion, the first two fire parties had been virtually wiped out. The fire was not completely out of control. A great ship was on the verge of dying. To save her, other men were going to have to go back on deck, most of them without sufficient training in firefighting techniques. The only hope was that the explosions would somehow subside. Until they did, no firefighting team could possibly survive on deck. In all, during the fire's first five minutes, nine major explosions would take place on the plane. It was already forming up, and they knew what they needed most on deck, the foam hoses. For some unknown reason, one or more of them know that it was necessary to perform certain manual functions on the flight deck and hangar decks to get them and the Forestall's island. Once this buffer zone was established, some of the damaged planes could be moved to safety. Along the port side, where most of the armed aircraft were parked, things were still out of control. That camera picture is further evidence of a successful team effort. Notice that a fog nozzle has been correctly brought into play over the heads of the firefighters to protect them as they work. Leadership and on-deck communications were early casualties of the Forestall fire. When some of the more inexperienced people did lend a hand, they made several well-intentioned but nearly disastrous mistakes. At one point, close to the island, two water hose teams were working in tandem with a foam hose team. The end result, the water washed away the one was the presence of white smoke. Obviously, the foam and fog nozzle teams were doing an effective job. But here and there, several glaring errors were still being committed. Several hose teams had men who were without shirts or protective gear of any kind. A fuel tank explosion close up, no matter how small, would have burned most of them to a crisp. The foam teams had laid down. Here and there, black smoke had actually started rising again. blanket was doing its job. Only untrained men would hot handle unexploded ordnance or kick it across the deck with their feet. These are things that can't be learned on the spot or after a fire starts. The fact that the men of the forest all pulled it off is a tribute to their coolness and courage. But we'll never know how many men were lost because some things were done the wrong way.
134 men were listed as killed or missing. Damage to the ship, exclusive of aircraft and other air equipment, was estimated in excess of $72 million dollars.